God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, ye heavens, adore him. Praise him, angels in the height. Sun and moon rejoice before him. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Praise the Lord, for he has spoken. Words his mighty voice obeyed. Laws which never shall be broken, for their guidance he has made. Worship, honor, glory, blessing, Lord, we offer unto thee. Young and old thy praise expressing, in glad homage bend the knee. All the saints in heaven adore thee. We would bow before thy throne as thine angels serve before thee. So on earth thy will be done. The Lord summons heaven and earth to witness his judgment on his people. The God of gods, the Lord, has spoken and summoned the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion's perfect beauty he shines. Our God comes. He keeps silence no longer. Before him fire devours. Around him tempest rages. He calls on the heavens and the earth to witness his judgment of his people. Summon before me my people, who made covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens proclaim his justice, for God himself is the judge. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord summons heaven and earth to, to witness his judgment on his people. Come to me in your distress, and I will save you. Listen, my people, I will speak. Israel, I will testify against you, for I am God, your God. I accuse you, lay the charge before you. I find no fault with your sacrifices. Your offerings are always before me. I do not ask more bullocks from your farms, nor goats from among your herds. For I own all the beasts of the forest, beasts in their thousands on my hills. I know all the birds in the sky, all that moves in the field belongs to me. Were I hungry, I would not tell you, for I own the world and all it holds. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Pay your sacrifice of thanksgiving to God and render him your votive offerings. Call on me in the day of distress. I will free you, and you shall honor me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come to me in your distress, and, and I, I will save, save you. you. A sacrifice of praise will give me glory. But God says to the wicked, but how can you recite my commandments and take my covenant on your lips, you who despise my law and throw my words to the winds? You who see a thief and go with him, 
who throw in your lot with adulterers, who unbridle your mouth for evil, and whose tongue is plotting crime. You who sit and malign your brother, and slander your own mother's son. You do this, and should I keep silence, do you think that I am like you? Mark this, you who never think of God, lest I seize you and you cannot escape. A sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me, and I will show God's salvation to the upright. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A sacrifice of praise will, will give, give me glory. We are always praying earnestly for you, that you may have a deep knowledge of God's will. From the second letter, of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians. As your fellow workers, we beg you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In an acceptable time I have heard you. On a day of salvation I have helped you. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. We avoid giving anyone offense, so that our ministry may not be blamed. On the contrary, in all that we do, we strive to present ourselves as ministers of God, acting with patient endurance amid trials, difficulties, distresses, beatings, imprisonments, and riots. As men familiar with hard work, sleepless nights, and fastings, conducting ourselves with innocence, knowledge, and patience in the Holy Spirit, in sincere love as men with the message of truth and the power of God, wielding the weapons of righteousness with right hand and left, whether honored or dishonored, spoken of well or ill. We are called impostors, yet we are truthful, nobodies who in fact are well known, dead. Yet here we are alive, punished, but not put to death, sorrowful, although we are always rejoicing, poor, yet we enrich many, we seem to have nothing, yet everything is ours. Men of Corinth, we have spoken to you frankly, opening our hearts wide to you. There is no lack of room for you in us. The narrowness is in you. In fair exchange, then, I speak as a father to his children. Open wide your hearts. Do not yoke yourselves in a mismatch with unbelievers. After all, what do righteousness and lawlessness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What accord is there between Christ and Belial? What common lot between believer and unbeliever? Tell me what agreement there is between the temple of God and idols. You are the temple of the living God, just as God has said, I will dwell with them and walk among them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and separate yourselves from them, says the Lord and touch nothing unclean. I will welcome you and be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Since we have these promises, beloved, let us purify ourselves from every defilement of flesh and spirit, and in the fear of God, strive to fulfill our consecration perfectly. 
What do righteousness and iniquity have in common? Is there a common ground between the temple of God and idols? You are the temple of the living God. Are you not aware that you are God's temple and that his spirit lives within you? You are the temple of the living God. From a homily on the second letter to the Corinthians, by St. John Chrysostom, Bishop. Our heart is enlarged. For as heat makes things expand, so it is the work of love to expand the heart, for its power is to heat and make fervent. It is this that opened Paul's lips and enlarged his heart. For I do not love only in words, he means, but my loving heart too is in unison with my words, and so I speak with confidence, without restraint or reserve. There was nothing more capacious than the heart of Paul, for he loved all the faithful with as intimate a love as any lover could have for a loved one, his love not being divided and lessened, but remaining whole and entire for each of them. And what marvel is it that his love for the faithful was such, since his heart embraced the unbelievers too, throughout the whole world? So he did not just say, I love you, but with greater emphasis, our mouth is open, our heart is enlarged. We hold you all in it, and not only that, but with room for you to move freely. For those who are loved enter fearlessly into the heart of their lover. And therefore, he says, you are not constrained because of us, but you are constrained in your own affections. See how this reproach is tempered with much forbearance, as is the way with those who love much. For he did not say, you do not love me, but you do not love me in the same measure. For he did not want to charge them more harshly, Indeed, one may see with what a wonderful love for the faithful he is always inflamed, as one finds proof of it in all his writings. To the Romans, he says, I desire to see you, and I have often planned to come to you, and if by any means at last I may succeed in reaching you. To the Galatians, he says, My little children, with whom I am again in labor. To the Ephesians, for this cause I bend my knees on your behalf. And to the Thessalonians, what is my hope and my joy and my crown of glory? Is it not yourselves? For he used to say that he carried them about in his heart and in his chains. Again he writes to the Colossians, I want you to know how greatly I strive for you and for all who have not seen my face. And to the Thessalonians, like a nurse taking care of her children, being desirous of you, we were ready to share with you not only the gospel, but also our own selves. So too, he says, you are not restricted by us. And so Paul does not merely say that he loves them, but also that they love him, so that in this way he may draw them to him. Indeed, to the Corinthians, he bears witness of this love when he says, Titus came, telling us of your longing, your mourning, your zeal for me. Love is patient, love is kind, never jealous or conceited. Love never takes pleasure in other people's sins, but rejoices in the truth. Hatred provokes disputes, but love covers all offenses. Love never takes pleasure in other people's sins, but rejoices in the truth. Let us pray. Lord, be merciful to your people. Fill us with your gifts and make us always eager to serve you in faith, hope, and love. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks. Thanks.